welcome to another episode my name is solution do francis and on this episode we'll be looking at four easy ways to a successful counseling session if this is your first time please do not forget to follow us or do or do subscribe to our channel as the case may be now let's go deep so the first thing to do when you have a client is to try to break the ice and develop a working relationship with the client this is important and necessary so that the client or the patient as the case may be understand you and you also understand the person in trying to break the ice you're telling stories you're allowing the patient to share his or her story his or her experience you're allowing um, your clients to also express themselves in the best possible way one of the things that i do with my clients each time we gather or we have a session is to allow them tell the story of if there's a first time i want to hear what happened to them all over again i want them to share it from a place of concern from a place of reality from a place of realness it doesn't have to be cooked it doesn't have to be the other way around no it's just being real and being factual about the whole thing so i like to hear them i like to have them tell me what exactly they think or what exactly they are going through and most importantly if 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 you are if this is not the first time you are meeting with such a client then you can always kick kick started from where you left off the other time find out so how did your week go how, how has it been since the last session what challenges have you had what 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 things have you had to deal with and how were you able to handle them this gives you the opportunity to understand that the person you're relating with is human and not a machine because they're able to tell you in all truthfulness whatever the challenge has been since you last met so try to break the ice as much as possible spend some time engaging the client and developing a good working relationship you can start off the interview with a small talk right something very simple to talk about Try to find common interests to talk about. Spend some time getting comfortable with the client and attempt to meet them on a human level. Now, when I say on a human level, don't try to go clinical on them. No, don't try to start using the, the, the vocabularies or the jargons in, 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 in your registers. No, as much as possible, relate with them on a human level. Sh ask them questions that show that you're concerned, right? Just gist gist about things so has it been how is work what exactly are you doing if, if you don't know what a person is doing before then ask what exactly are you doing how are you handling things you know this makes this person understand that yes you're coming on a human level you're not coming uh, on a clinical level usually humans don't like when you're very very methodic methodical they don't like it when you come to them with that seriousness you know they want to hear the human side of this when you go into a counseling session bring up that human side of you be empathetic don't don't come strong face all right be be unique be sincere with whatever you are saying all right so develop a relationship by talking you know some some small talk would do a whole lot ask the client about their day and how they are feeling ask questions you know ask questions you can even ask the client about their hobbies right what do they do to entertain themselves for example you could ask the person when you're bored what do you do do you ever get bored okay i don't get bored oh so all day of the week you are actually i mean engaged and all that just bring up something all right try to find out their hobby at the end of the day you'll find a common ground if i were to be your client for example I, I mean i'm always on youtube i pass my time on youtube i pass my time on instagram you know i have a facebook community and all that so if you meet someone like me as your client right and you are into that kind of thing, that may be something for us to talk about because we get to talk about Things that are trending, we begin to talk about things that are happening, all right, and the like. So look for a common ground. Uh, it could it could be techie stuff, all right. But as much as possible, don't go all clinical. Try to find a common ground between you and your client. Now you can now ease into the assessment or interview. Now you remember that at this point, you have now moved from just being, you have moved from just being, just asking questions. Now you can move. Or transit into the clinical stage now the importance of this is now because you've gotten to know each other it's easy for the client to pay attention to you or to listen to what you have to say now if you know that the client has a history of mental illness and that they have been assessed by multiple clinicians over the years mention this fact let the client know that you have a bit of their history if you do if you do not then you can go ahead and ask the client to tell you what's up right well, if you know, let the client know so you can wait for the client to say something about their history of meeting mental health professionals. 
so you have something like i mean maybe a case note was transferred to you or this client was referred to you and they've told you he has seen so so and so persons has been to the a professional several times you know so you have those facts right so you're not bringing it to the you're not passing it to the client because you want the client to feel bad or something no so you say it in a way that you let the client know that okay i know this about this what exactly has been happening what was the experience like all right and i give this client the opportunity to share their own part of the story for all you care this person might be even reluctant might have been reluctant to see you right but just so well let me give you one last chance after because everyone i've seen i've not really been able to solve my problem okay but right now the client is in front of you you need to make that client feel comfortable right even though you have the history but you're able to let the client know that look i have this history right but i'm not bringing it to you because i want to attack you or antagonize you or because i want to talk about it so why are you here what exactly has the experience been like and you would find it easier to engage the client when you go on that route one important thing that you cannot do without in counseling is active listening you need to use active listening and acknowledge what the client says tell them you can imagine how frustrating it may be for them to repeat their stories over and over again too many times with different mental health professionals I remember what i said at the initial time that you if you have the history you can let this client know that you notice that he or she has seen several mental health professionals and are saying that let them know and understand that you understand how frustrating it can be for them to keep repeating their stories over and over right to different persons at different times all right so you need to acknowledge whatever they are saying give a nod when they talk let them know that you have their attention okay and they have yours as well so not when you need to nod focus on them pay attention on them this is not the time for you to really write notes but if you want to write down some things let the client know please do you mind if i write some things down as we talk this would help and encourage the client so, it won't, so the clients won't have that feeling that you are keeping information to share then you can memorize your interview assessment questions so you don't have to be looking here and there into your notes you know the questions you want to ask also when you memorize the interview or the assessment questions on your from on your list it gives the client a sense of connection right the client knows that you're not trying to follow a textbook way the client knows that you're not trying to how do i put it now you're not trying to read from one textbook or the other but that you know what you're doing that you're being that that this counseling session is custom made for him or her all right so don't just go each time you want to ask a question you're looking into your book again memorize the questions on the assessment form or the list that you're working from and once you have memorized that you plant what once you have memorized that you feel more confident all right i will not even be bothered about forgetting any important question so before you set up for any counseling session try to check the questions that you have for any counseling session i meant to say try to check the questions that you have on your assessment form and know them by heart all right they are not a uh, difficulty so prioritize them and arrange them based on importance that way you don't have to be looking here and there into your book and that helps you to connect with your client the next thing i need to do is to try to conduct that interview like you're having a conversation conduct it like you're having a conversation don't conduct it like um you are reading from a textbook or from how do i put it from uh yeah from a textbook or from a guide try to use open-ended questions don't be so direct with your questions try to use casual conversational style when asking your questions and clarify what the client tells you all right and in fact when you're conducting an interview using a conversation a casual conversational approach it can lead to a dialogue that will generate information that you probably would not have discovered if you had facilitated the interview as usual if your client reveals information that makes them emotional acknowledge their emotions and support them before moving on to another question so in the process or in the course of having this conversation your client breaks and begins to cry acknowledge the emotions don't just move on to another question right let them come out of that let them relax from that particular phase of their emotions and then you can now move to another phase of the questions don't act like you don't care because you actually should care okay so don't just go all this is how it's supposed to be now these open-ended questions is all called leading and pacing in therapy so you're asking a question right that will lead your clients to say something that you really want to hear okay so as much as possible be aware and try to see that you are actually asking questions that would encourage the encourage your clients to actually answer don't ask questions that will make them shut down for example um, you should ask questions like 
So looking at looking at your history and looking at what you have done, how would you say this thing that you have done have really helped you? Now it's very I'm saying, do you think this thing that you have been doing have helped you? That way the client begins to ask him or herself, okay, I'm not sure. Should I answer? Should I not? But the way I asked initially, so looking at everything that you have done, how would you say? Now notice that I said how would you? It's not the same as do you think? All right, so because when you ask open-ended questions, it doesn't close it up for them. They're able to express themselves. So it's not it's not a question. You don't ask questions that assume that you have gotten to a conclusion. No, ask the questions that will bring about conversations that will make the person come out and then you kickstart a conversation from there. you find that the client is more likely to talk at length about their life using their own way of describing things. Try not to assume or ask that you understand everything the client is telling you. Don't act or assume because they can actually read it when you don't understand. They will read if you don't understand it. They know. Alright, so generate hypothesis and particular themes during the interview about the client's diagnosis. Explore your ideas by asking open-ended questions that hopefully elicitate additional information that will help you formulate an opinion. Ask questions, like I said earlier, that are open-ended. Don't ask questions that suggest or assume that you already have an idea or you already have a conclusion about this person try to remember that empathy will help you develop a good working relationship with the client so it's okay to care about the client and to be compassionate please it's okay to be compassionate and it's okay to care about the client don't listen to anyone who tells you that don't be compassionate don't be empathetic again i'll take that Try to remember that empathy will help you develop a good working relationship with a client. And it's okay to care about the client and to be compassionate about your client. Now, final words. Number one, think of your time with your client as a conversation. The questions are a way to get to know him or her better. Number two, try to get a back and forth with him going between you. You talk, he or she talks. You talk, he or she talks. Don't just pause and just be looking while the client is standing like, I'm done. Oh, okay. I didn't know. No. Let it be a back and forth thing. That way, there is a conversation going on and it's relational. Okay? Take your time. Pause. Make occasional contact. If for any reason at all, you're not ready for a session, let your client know that you'd like to reschedule. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to run through your sessions with a particular client. Because when you're running through, they would also be able to read that you don't have their time they can read from your expressions and they can tell that you do not have time or you're in a hurry so don't be in a hurry during your counseling sessions now if they mention a traumatic incident look sympathetic and if it feels appropriate say something valid just such as that sounds really hard all right if they mention something that is traumatic or something that has hits them that is traumatic don't try to make less of it okay let them understand that you really care and be sympathetic about it and be empathetic about it and as much as possible you know let them understand that you really understand how hard it could have been i can imagine rather how hard this would have been so take these things and go practice and i hope i can be the best version at your counseling till i come your way again i remain to lucia francis bye for now